Hey, Tony Gaskins here. How to make a man fall in love. Now understand this, this is not one of those clickbait videos. This is not some sorcery or some magic. It's not one of them games that uh, a woman who doesn't understand really men will try to tell you. And this is not about women love bees, the curse word bees. It's not all of that. I need you to understand this. And this is really a follow-up follow to my video, which you can go back and watch it called uh, When Do Men Fall in Love? To be honest with you, a man falling in love has less to do with what you do for him and what you do to him than it does with who you are yourself. Now, that, now that, just, that just blew you away. That just... Because you thought this was going somewhere else. You thought that I was going to tell you to make a man fall in love. You got to suck and duck and cook and jump and hop and all of this. Be the best cook. Be the best cleaner. Be the best in the bedroom. That's where you thought this was going. But you're wrong. And to be honest with you, that is the honest truth that those things have nothing to do with anything. Listen to what I'm telling you. Woo! I might be the only one in the world that has ever said this. I don't know because I don't watch other relationship teachers. But this right here is the key to the world. So share this with every woman you know. You, the number one way to make a man fall in love is you being your absolute best self. So what I mean by that is you loving you. And what does this look like? A man falls in love with the woman who holds him accountable. Point blank period. Write that down. Hold him accountable. See, women think, so many women think, that if a man mistreats you and you suck it up and you ride it out and you are a ride or die chick and you deal with it and you're tough and you can deal with being cursed out and you can deal with being cheated on and you can deal with him having an outside baby that that makes him love you. No, that actually makes him despise you. Because if you are a weak woman in response to his ignorant behavior, then you don't make him better. You make him worse. And then in his ignorant mind, because he is ignorant when he's acting immature, it is from ignorance and immaturity. In his mind, you actually hate him. You actually despise him. You actually are so weak and so broken yourself that he can't be attracted to you. He actually feels bad for you, but he doesn't feel bad enough for you to change his behavior. What sense does that make? Doesn't make any sense. But that is the nature of a man. Understand, we're not living in a perfect world and we're not talking about perfect men. We're talking about the men that you're dealing with. So what happens here is by you putting up with all of the crap, it makes him disrespect you more. It makes him look down on you more. And people always talk about the ride or die chick and all of that. No, that, that, that is not the way to go. The way for a man to truly fall in love is for you to hold him accountable, for you to call him on his stuff, for you to check him. With a quiet strength, with a quiet confidence, what I mean by that is you're not emasculating him. You're not calling him stupid and dumb and you're not even a man and you're, you're a boy and you're a child and I hate the ground that you walk on and I curse the day that you were born. That's not, make, that's not holding him accountable. Holding him accountable is calling him out and checking him and saying, listen, if you ever want to see me again don't you ever in your life curse at me ever and if you want to see me gone for good 
curse at me again right now. That's holding him accountable. When he stays out all night, listen, I don't know what you were doing. I don't know where you were. But that is the first and the last time that that's going to happen. Try me and see. He might wait 10 years to try you again. But when he tries you again, you pack up everything just like it's been 10 days and you move on. See, a man falls in love with the woman who makes him better. Listen to me before you get in the high. I ain't trying to make a man better. I'm not going to be making a man better. <laughs> Little Tony Gass, always talking about making a man better. You always want to raise a man. That's not what I'm talking about. What I mean, this does not mean to raise a man. What this means is that you love yourself. You have self-respect yourself. So now this man looks at you and he realizes this woman loves herself. So what I'm learning as a man is that I got to love me. And I can't truly love her if I don't love me. This woman has been raped. This woman has been molested or this woman has been abused. This woman has been abandoned. This woman has been disrespected. This woman has had a broken heart. This woman has gone through hardship. She's lost loved ones. Whatever it is, everybody has a story. But he'll look at your story, even if it's not that deep or not that, you know, drastic or dramatic he'll look at your story and see everything that you've lived through everything that you've come through and he'll say she's come through all of this in her life and she's still mature she's still classy she's still strong she's not insecure she's not weak she's not a floor mat so if she can live through that and come out better on the other side then what am I doing as a man? Why am I slacking as a man? Why am I a grown boy? Why am I less than a man? Why am I treating her like this? So now he starts to realize this woman holds me accountable and she makes me better. It's no different than having a teacher who makes you better in the classroom, a coach who makes you better in the sport. It is the same thing. We fall in love with the people who call us to our higher self who push us to the next level, who hold us accountable. So understand that, hold him accountable. Number two, now my, now I want y'all to understand, I don't have a list, this is not written down, this all coming off my spirit, off the top of my dome, so this is not in order, so you can write it down in the comments as you do it, and that's the God's heaven truth, that's how I shoot all my videos, one take and the spirit flowing through me, but I want you to understand that because I don't even know where I'm going with it. But number two is, number one was hold them accountable. Number two would be to listen to him. See, men don't have a voice in the world. Yes, we may be the president. Yes, we may be CEOs. But men traditionally and societally are not allowed to show emotions, to show vulnerability, to show weakness. You don't see a man in his car crying at the red light. I've seen so many women at the red light crying. I've never seen a man at the red light crying. That is because of the conditioning of societies where men have to be tough. You got to suck it up. You can't show weakness. You can't show vulnerability. You can't show fear. And so when a woman has a no judgment zone and a woman can ask a man, you know, so Okay, I see you working on that new project. You know, what could go right? What could go wrong? You know, what's your biggest fear about it? You know, are, are you nervous at all? Like, how do you really feel about it? No, no, really. Like, in a real way. Like, be honest with me. And you can create that no judgment zone and you open up and he says, well, actually, you know what? I'll be honest with you. And I've never said this to anybody and I probably never will say this to anybody, but I'm scared to death. I'm scared I'm going to be judged. I'm scared I'm going to fail. I'm scared I'm going to be talk, talked about. And then so in going hand in hand, when you listen, the next thing is speak life. When you hold him accountable and then you listen and then you speak life. So when you hear his fears, when you hear his dreams, when you hear his worries, his concerns, when you hear all of that and then you turn around and you life coach him, you speak life into him. In the same time, you are supporting him. And, and understand me now, you're not supporting a man who's not supporting himself. 
You're not supporting a man who's not busting his butt and doing everything in his power to be a better man. You're not supporting a couch potato. You're not supporting no excuse making man. The, your, the goal here, so y'all can get out and get it. Let's go on, stop on your little comment now. Listen to me. The goal here is not to support and to make a no good man fall in love with you. The goal here is to attract a good man who's good already in his life and in his heart and he wants to be better and you become an accountability partner and you hold him accountable you're not raising him you're not training him but you're holding him accountable and then you are listening to him and then you are speaking life into him and then you are supporting him I understand I can speak to this perfectly because my wife did it perfectly. She's never yelled at me. Going on 13 years of marriage, she's never yelled at me. This is the honest God truth. I've given her reasons to yell. People say, oh, that's because you're a good man. No, I was a terrible man my first two years. But she held me accountable. She checked me on the first behavior and she let me know, you do this again and I'm done. She held me accountable. The next thing is she listened to me. I can speak my dreams, I can speak my fears, I can speak my worries, I can speak my insecurities. She doesn't, oh Lord, here we go, oh my, you are such a punk. You are so soft. You are such, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, will you grow up hair? She doesn't emasculate me and attack me if I share something that I'm fearful, that I'm worried about. She, she, she listens to me and then she speaks life. She speaks life. She say, listen, don't worry about that. You got it. Like, stop judging yourself like that. Understand this. Understand that. And she speaks life into me. And then lastly, she supports me. So I come up with four things. Yeah, you keep going on. You can add a whole bunch of other stuff. She supports me, meaning that I'm right now working for you. And she's sick right now. She's in the bed trying to get some rest. And she's trying to rest. And she is not crying and complaining and saying, look, you just lay in here in the bed and rub my back all day. She said, no, I got my medicine. We good. You you know, do what you got to do. You know, and I rub her back and we, we was taking a nap together. But she supports me. I got to fly out tomorrow to go work with a sports team because I'm a team life coach for professional teams and collegiate teams. Um, basketball teams and so I'm helping these young men develop she's not feeling the best we got two boys but she said look that's your purpose you know that's your purpose that's your career that's your job go ahead I'll be good she supports me she doesn't give me a sob story she I do everything I could do for her but she doesn't just say look I'm a damsel in distress you know baby me cater to me she said I appreciate all the meds, I appreciate you massaging my temples, I appreciate you rubbing my back, but look, you got work to do, get to work, I'm not dying, I'm not gonna die, I just, I just a chest cold, you know, and so she supports me, so I'm gonna be gone for uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, five days, I'll be gone five days, and she supports me. She's not saying, oh, why you got to leave again? Oh, you got to leave again. Oh, you leave me lonely. Oh, I'm lonely. She said, no, live your purpose. So understand that support means a whole lot. Now, what I want you to understand, which I can't remember everything I said. Maybe you can. Well, I said, hold, uh, hold, hold him accountable. Listen, listen. The average woman speaks 25,000 words a day. The average man speaks 10,000 words a day. Your power will be in listening because no one else is listening to him. Ask him questions that prompt him and let him talk. And when you do that, he's going to let you talk too. Listen, then speak life, speak life into him. And then number four would be what I said, support him, support him. And I can't think of a fifth right now, but what I want you to understand about this fifth and the no fifth that I can't think of right now, because I'm, I'm pulling from personal experience, is that these things I gave you, none of this, it literally has nothing to do with what you do in the bedroom. Nothing. You could be terrible. It has nothing to do with how many meals you cook. 
how many clothes you wash, how, how many things of laundry you do, how many head scratches and back rubs. It has nothing to do with the things that women think, most women think make a man fall in love. It has nothing to do with being a, a doormat, a floor mat, a ride or die chick. It has nothing to do with those things. So all of that, uh, well, you got to rub his head. You got to stroke his ego. You know, you need to serve him. You need to cook every day or at least five days a week. You need to do laundry. Keep the house spick and span. He should be coming home to a vacation. It should feel so clean and pristine. You are the CEO of home and he's going out and he's making the money. It has nothing to do with serving a man like he is a king. It has everything to do with self-love, self-love. And when you love self, now you can give true love and support. And that is what will make a man fall in love because he sees that you love you and that you love him. And that washes him, it cleanses him. And then what he's going to do He's going to take note of that and he won't be able to hurt you because you hold him accountable. So he can't hurt you because anything he do, you anything he does, you're on his neck. So he knows I can't get away with anything. So I might as well bring my best to this woman. I hey, understand where I'm coming from here. I hope that helps you. I hope it makes sense. This Tony Gaskins, if you made it this far, type be blessed in the comments. We'll talk soon.